Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and welcome to this new series of tutorials on Softimage Ice. Um, so a while ago um, I had the chance to actually get a bit of exposure to to Softimage Ice and, and I realized that it's really amazing um, platform. Uh, Ice stands for Interactive Creative Environment um, and it's quite interesting because it's a kind of a runtime engine like it works with the timeline and it basically it's similar to grasshopper I mean, let's just take a look at it uh, so you can just bring it by pressing this button here um, if you are in the ice tab right if you're modeling you're probably gonna go somewhere else like the render tree so make sure you're in ice and then you press this one um, again if you're new to soft image just like try to do some tutorials uh, out there about how how to move around. What I'm going to show here is just maybe just pressing S. I'm using the soft image uh, um, shortcuts or binding. So I'm using S with left click to drag, uh, left, uh, right click with S to orbit and then middle mouse to zoom in and out, right? So that's very straightforward. Uh, I like using the, the soft image binding because there's some things that somehow is. Uh, in a way, it's kind of um, it's difficult to find if, I, if you use the Mayam uh, binding. So it's not such a big deal to find um, the shortcuts quite quickly in, in the internet of how to deal with Softimage own shortcuts. So let's look at ICE. Uh, so what is ICE, right? Um, and let's start by creating something and we just can talk on top of that. So for instance, we can create a polygon mesh and we can create a cube, right? So we have this cube here, right? Uh, we can go here into wireframe and we go into hidden light removal, which is one of the nice um, visualization modes of uh, soft image. And then also maybe we could press X, C or V to just rotate, move and so forth, right? So I'm gonna just place this cube here uh, also Maybe we could just turn on wireframe unshaded. So in that way, I'm pressing space to to go into selection tool, and then I can just. It's a little bit annoying that you have to just kind of not click outside, but just like do a little kind of a uh, small selection outside the object just to kind of unselect. But anyway, so we have the object, and basically in this area here. We could actually start working with soft image eyes, right? For uh, working with eyes, we basically need to do is just create an ice tree, right? An ice tree, um, it is uh, an operation that would happen to the object um, that would allow us to kind of visually script in a very similar way than Grasshopper does, or if you're familiar with any kind of graphical interface um, for scripting. Uh, but it's everything it's kind of quite uh, optimized for for multi-threading uh, or basically to to use the power of your computer so you can actually get really really a lot of calculations oh, sorry about that a lot of calculations very quickly so let's create an ice tree and you'll see how this works right so this is a very simple ice tree you can actually do um, the same thing here uh, with s and left click you can drag uh, like basically pan and then you can actually zoom in and out so I cannot get closer than that and we have this ice tree these tabs you, you can uh, collapse or just open the node in and out um, so how does this work um, right so uh, the ice trees uh, basically works with the idea of getting data so we're gonna search here for a node. These are the list of nodes that we have. So get data. Um, and you see that this node actually is red because it doesn't have any information and also uses the set data, right? So this is a general workflow around uh, soft image eyes, right? Um, you collect some data from the object, you manipulate the data here, somewhere here, and then you set up the data and you apply the data to your object, right? So you can do transformations of data. You can, when you're working with an ice tree, it's different than working with a simulated ice tree that gets calculated 
differently every frame. So for now we're going to be we're going to be doing an ice tree in order to create some sort of transformation tool, right? So why are these nodes red? Right? Let's start by just double click on each one of them and you'll see that these nodes don't have any information. So what we have to do here is just type self dot point position. Right? And um, when we type point position, you see that the con like the menu becomes different, right? Uh, we can close this and double click to open it again. And you'll see that the value of this element became yellow. If I click on this yellow, I can actually connect it somewhere, right? So you could type all sorts of different uh, values from the object, right? Basically, the get data node becomes collect any of the data of the object so we can explore the object if we would if we wouldn't put point position but we would put just self dot explore uh, you'll see that our self our polygon mesh this in this case the cube has all this data that we can actually use right so we are using somewhere here it's point position right so that's why it turns yellow this is a vector right uh, yellow is a vector and you will see that each of the data types has a color so we can actually start uh, identifying those colors and using them differently so that's pretty good um we could say well set data set data works the same well in the same way so we're going to do self dot um point position um and you see that right now self dot point position uh, because we are not inputting anything it's giving us the, the, the option to just basically uh, put everything like to a vector and define describe a vector here xyz right so if we would execute oh, damn it, sorry um if we would um execute this node now you know the cube would disappear right because basically it's setting up all the points of the cube just to be zero, 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 right? And because there's no space, they, you cannot even see the mesh. Mm -hmm. But um, what we could do now is just connect this data again. So we're collecting the data of the points and we're setting the data of the points here, right? And you might say, well, that's stupid, right? Like it's what you're doing is just collecting the, da the same information you have and then you're setting to that exact same thing. So basically you're not doing anything. Yeah, that's true. but what we are doing here is just basically the general workflow. Like all the workflow of ICE starts like this. Something happens here and then you set it up, right? So let's do some small transformation. Let's say we could do a VEC 3D, uh, vector 3D, right? Um, any vector and then maybe do an addition. So add, uh, we can see in math, right? So if we pick this vector, and we add this new vector to um, to the result of the position of the points, and we add this uh, information as the now it, this becomes the new point. You can see that I can actually basically add a vector of some units to our cube. So we're basically moving all points together, and that determines that we're moving the uh, the cube, right? But we're doing it in a way in which we're transforming the data in here, the vectorial information of each point, and we're setting it as an output. So that's the new geometry, right? So this is the very first tutorial. This is a workflow that you're going to have in ICE. Uh, we're going to be looking at different uh, vectorial uh, transformations, the formations that we can do on the geometry, how to do agents and steering behaviors with um, ice um, and whatever, like all, all sorts of different tools that we could actually use. Uh, really powerful, really interesting results of some students working with this. So very recommendable. Um, again, there's some tutorials out there that would help you like deal with the interface or modeling tools. It's always good to know a little bit more about the software and eventually like how to deal with rendering and, and some of the other stuff. Um, but for now, this is it. Um, I'll see you guys soon.